Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Encounter Life Church. As always, we are excited that you're here. Shout out to all the folks that are joining us online. Good morning to you as well. And as I always say, listen, if you're close, we want to see you in the building. So if you're close, make sure that you come on the campus and join us. We'd really love to see you in the house. That said, we are going to get started with some announcements, and then we will move into today's service. Encounter Life, please take out your phones and scan the QR code you see on the screen. We do have our own app. So if you scan that, you can install the app on your phone. It doesn't matter whether you have Android or an iPhone, it will take you to the right place to pick up the app. So make sure that you do that. Ladies, there is a Bible study starting on January the 9th. That is a Tuesday. It'll be starting at 7 o'clock p.m. It is a Zoom Bible study, so you can access it anywhere you are. It is based on the material from Jackie Perry Hill. If you know who she is, you know she is a dynamic and thought-provoking speaker. It's going to be led by Chevy Jean Julian and Tracy McKinney. If you are interested, please make sure to reach out to them. You do not want to miss this. You can see their contact information is on the screen screen. So if you reach out to either one of them, they can give you more details about the Bible study starting on January 9th at seven o'clock. If you are a couple and you are in need of some counseling support, we do encourage you to check out the Couples Counseling Center. Helping Couples Connect is what they do. You can find out more information about the organization by going to www.couplescounselingcenter.org. Org. For those of you all who are looking for an opportunity to serve the homeless, please make sure to check out Widow's Pantry. We do partner with them. If you want more information about how you can volunteer with Widow's Pantry, you can contact Deshonda Young. Her email is there on the screen. You can also reach Dee Dee by phone at 301-752-8833. You can also find out more information about the organization of Widow's Pantry by going to widowspantry.org. We do want to remind you all of the options to give to support the ministry here at Encounter Life Church. There are several different ways to do so. You can give through Cash App by simply going to dollar sign Encounter Life on your Cash App. You can also give by text by texting the word give to 301-804-2520. Of course, you can give by mail to Encounter Life Church 2200 Colbert Drive, Temple Hills, Maryland 20748. And you can give online at the website by going to encounterchurch.net forward slash give. We do want to connect with you if you want to connect with us for any reason, go ahead and take a scan of the QR code that's on your screen right now. You can also text the word new to 301-804-2520. If you are new here and you just have some questions for us, make sure that again, you scan that QR code or text the word new to 301-804-2520 and we would love to answer any questions you might have. If you are a new believer or you are someone that's recommitted your life to Christ and you want some support, you want to know what to do next. If you're a new believer, if you are recommitting your life, you want some support to move you forward in your walk with God. Please text the word next to 301-804-2520 and we'll get back with you and show you how we can support you. Or you can go to the website by going to encounterchurch.net forward slash next. And there's a form there that you can fill out. We'll see that form and we'll get back in contact with you as well. We would love to support either your new growth as a new believer or your recommitment to Christ. Thanks for being with us this morning. Now let's get started. And welcome to Encounter Life Church. For those who are here in the building on campus with, with us, thank you for being here. We know that you, could, you had some choices today, and we're so thankful, so grateful. We're going to rejoice with you that you chose to be with Encounter Life Church. For those of you who are coming in, just come on in. Just keep coming. If you're driving and you hear us, come on in. We're praying for your safety. Come on in. And for those of you who are at home, for those of you who are at home because you could not come here, we thank you so much for still being a part with us. We say hello to the Wilsons. We say hello to so many of our, of, of our family members, to Sister Smith. We say hello to so many of you who just can't make it in today, and we understand we miss your presence, but we're so thankful that we're connected through this technology. For those of you who are able to come in, and for some circumstance you cannot make it today, we pray that soon and very soon that you would join us on campus, that we want to be with you, we want to sit next to you and, and ask, do you have a mint? Do you have a piece of gum? Maybe I need it. 
whatever. We just want you to be in fellowship with us. So would you make your way, if, you're, if it's possible, for you to join us here on campus. We are the Encounter Life Church where our fine pastor is none other than the Dr. Uh, Dwayne Anthony McKinney. And we're so thankful for the ministry that God pours through him. So we want to pray for him to, this morning as he uh, brings the word. We want to pray over our praise team as they take us into praise and worship. We are again Encounter, Encounter Life Church where we exalt the, the presence of God, where we enlarge God's kingdom, equip God's people, and express God's love in a way that only Encounter Life Church has been called out to do. So we again welcome you. We invite you to come today and to keep on coming. Would you stand with me for a word of prayer very quickly, please? Those of you at, at home, if you're able, come on and stand. We want you to participate in every way. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank and praise you for a full year that's gone before us. Lord, there's some people that started this year that didn't make it to the end. Some people that have had major medical situations some children that have gone astray, some families that have broken down, some birthdays that have been celebrated, some anniversaries that have been rejoiced over, so much living, jobs and new jobs, graduations, failures and successes, so much has happened in these last 365 days. Great changes, small changes, but one thing has remained the same. And it's for that reason, Lord God, that we say thank you. It is for that reason, the constancy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The constancy of our Father God, the Creator. The constancy, the consistency, the same Holy Spirit that started us off last year still resides in those who name the name of Jesus those who've accepted the unspeakable gift of salvation. Lord, we thank you that you've carried us through another year. And although we've gone through many changes, we praise you that you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we look forward to the new year. We look forward to just in a few minutes hearing what, our, what you've given our pastor to say to close out one year and to walk us into another. Lord, we thank you for the members of our praise team that will lift their voice and guide us into worship. We thank you for every member that's in the seat, every family, every family member, every guest that's in the seat, that are here on campus, that are on their way, and that those who are at home, we know that you are the almighty, the everlasting, the one who can do anything but fail. So it's for those reasons that we lift up our hands, we lift up our voices, and we enter into praise and worship for the only God, the incomparable, one who has no equal. Let the church say amen. 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 Come on, church. Amen. He's taken us through another year. He's been so faithful. He's been so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise team. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Excited everybody. to be in the house of the Lord. Put your hands together. Come on. Clap. Oh. Yes, Lord.
name of Jesus, power in your name. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Oh, Lord, we're moving forward. What a moment you have brought me to. Such a freedom I have found in you. You're a healer who makes all things new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you my past is over in you. Things are made new, surrender my life to Christ. We're moving, moving forward. Oh Lord, we're moving forward. Say I'm not going, not going back. Moving ahead, ahead. Here to declare, here to declare to my you. past is over.
So much has happened in my life in these past months, y'all. I'm so ex God is, oh, God has been blowing my mind. Things that you don't even know. Like I was telling my friends, they were like, how, how, did, how are you following God? What is happening? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just working in his will and letting him do the rest. Yes. We, we try to control everything. We try to control so much. Yes. But the Bible says, if you take care of his business, he'll take care of yours. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God yes. and all the other things, everything yes. else, every yes. carnal thing that we think yes. is so important. Yes. He made it. Why would you think it's big for him? Yes, Lord. He knows all about you. He made you. He knows your dreams. He knows your desires. But if you follow him first, yes. put him first, place him back on the altar of your heart, everything else will fall into line. I am a witness. Hallelujah. We're moving forward. That is my prayer for 2024 that I don't take my eyes off of God. Distractions come, and the devil knows which distractions I need. But I don't take my eyes off of God. No matter what comes, no matter what goes away, me and God, it's just me and Jesus. We got our own thing going. It's me and Jesus. Hallelujah. We're moving forward. Lord, we'll follow you forward. We'll follow you. Forward. Let's say that you make all things new. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. One more time, you make. You make So things haven't turned out as you hoped. Life took a turn. A bump. A darkened sky. And at times it may have seemed there was no hope. But here's the good news. Our God is the God of fresh starts. Our God is the God of new beginnings. Our God brings new mercies, new compassions, not just once a year, not just when things are bad, but every single morning. This season has been tough. And for many of us, things will never be the same. But we are here, breathing, maybe smiling, or crying, or shouting, or laughing. But we are here. Feeling. Maybe fighting, or cheering, or seeking, or grieving, but we are here, living, and we are not alone. Our God is here. Our God is with us. And our God 
is the God of new creations. Praise God. Praise God. We are, we serve the God of the new. He's making all things new. He's making things new in your life, uh, even as we speak. And the beautiful thing about it is you might not see it right now, but God, how many know that even though you may not see it, that God is still working? Amen? Amen. And we're expecting, we talked about it last week, we are living uh, in expectancy, expecting God to do great and mighty things that our mind could never conceive. Just want to welcome all of you this morning. Can we give God a hand of praise this morning? Amen. God, this this is exciting. It's an exciting day. Today we are on the brink of a new year. Amen. Amen. I praise God. I want to first of all give a praise God for our our worship team and musicians just setting the atmosphere this morning. I'm like, Darian, all of a sudden, man, she's giving my word. Amen. She got, she all in my notes this morning. I praise God for that. Just want to welcome you to Encounter Life Church. We're excited. Anybody expecting God to do something great in 2024? Uh, I love it. I praise God. Uh, we're expecting God to do great in 2024. I know our devotion with our kids this morning. We all get excited about New Year's. Uh, and, you know, statistics will tell us, I was reading an article from 2019. It says 60% of people make New Year's resolutions. 60% of people make New Year's resolutions, but only 8% of them keep them. So all of us are like, you know, but we get excited about New Year, but the fact of the matter is how many know that his mercy is new every morning? I'm excited about New Year, but our devotion this morning with our kids was be excited about New Day. Because today is another opportunity. 2024 is here. I'm excited. 2023 is gone. But look, God, look today. When you wake up tomorrow, he, listen, his mercy is new for that day. And he's got something great for you. He's got a plan for your life. So I'm excited about what God is going to do because I know that he works all things together for the good of them who are called according to his purpose. And I know I'm called according to his purpose. That means he's working for my good. So whatever happened to you in 2023, somebody, anybody, if you had a rough time in 2023, somebody say amen. 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 You ain't had a rough time in 2023, but guess what? How many know he's still God? He's still a deliverer. He's still a way maker. And he got you through 2023. Why? Because he's working something. He's working something greater in you. It might come in 2024. It may not. It might not come to 2026. We don't know when it's coming, but we know he's working something. Amen? I'm going to say this before I pray. And and because you know he's working something, 2023, we're on the brink. We're just several hours away from a new year. And there may have been some painful times that you've experienced in this last year. And it reminds me of something I told my son uh, on this week. On Friday, we went to the gym, and he's like, ah, that hurts. That hurts. He was was experiencing some pain and some discomfort. He was working some muscles he never worked before. How many know that when God, sometimes he got to work some stuff in you that that hadn't been worked out before, it could be painful. And he was working some stuff that uh, that he didn't like. And what I told him, and this is my word for you, this is what I told him, as you look at 2023 and go into 2024, what I told him is, son, focus less on the pain but more on the product and fall in love with the process. Did you get that? Focus less on the pain that you're experiencing now, but focus on the product while you fall in love with the process. Because listen, this light affliction, which is but for a moment that you experienced in 2023, he is working a glory that is far more exceeding than anything you could ever imagine. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. So happy New Year today. We are New Year's Eve. For those who want to welcome all of our guests, if you're a guest, can we give our guests a round of applause in the building? As well as those uh, who are online, we welcome you. We are glad that you chose to join us today. We are excited because y'all see on the screen, what two words do you see on the screen? Restore and multiply. And you say, Pastor, what is that up on the screen? And, and I'm going to pray for us in a moment, but... You know, someone had asked me, what is our theme? What do we want to focus on this year? 
because we talked about focusing on the product, the goal. We want to have a focus. What is our focus this year? And two words dropped into my spirit, and one of them comes from something we talked about a lot in our leadership retreat. The two words that came to my, my heart were restoration and multiplication. Restoration and multiplication. And so for Encounter Life this year, we want to focus on, number one, restoration. We, we want to be a place where, the, like he said, he makes all things new. We want to be a place where people can be restored, where, where stuff can be restored, whatever. Listen, that the years that the locust and the canker worm have stolen can be restored. And we're going to get to that in a minute. We want to focus on restoration this year, being, allow, allowing God to empower us to bring people back, those who are far away, to let them know that God is drawing them near. But also, God told me, listen, he, he also wants us to focus on multiplication. He wants us to multiply in our number, but also multiplication in our resources. I believe God wants to know, I, am, I believe that this place is primed for God to do some great things. And so what I, God has convicted me to approach him with my eyes open and expect him to multiply. Amen? So what I, my sister says, I'm a poet. I, y'all know I always got to have something rhyming and some kind of alliteration. So here, this is it. I, it's not on the screen, so you got to remember it. All right? This is, the, this, is our, this is what we're looking at for 2024. Y'all ready? Believe in God for more and empowered to restore in 2024. Can y'all get with that? Encounter life, we're believing God for more and empowered to restore in 2024. Amen? And we look forward to God restoring some things in your life as well. Can y'all pray with me? Let us pray together. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time to gather, Lord. We thank you for the year that has passed, for 2023. Lord, we thank you for the trials. We thank you. Lord God, for, for the tribulations, and we thank you for the victories and the triumphs, the lessons that we have learned, the wins and the losses. We thank you, Lord, in everything we give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, Lord, concerning us. We thank you. We're grateful that we're here today, that you watched over us and got us into 23, 23 saw us all the way through, Lord God, and now we're here, Lord, with lessons learned, ready to do your will and your way. Lord God, I pray for somebody this morning under the sound of my voice, God, who came here heavy. Lord God, 2023 was rough for them. Somebody who came here focusing more on the pain. God, help them to see the product. Help them to see that you're working something, though they may not have it right now, God, that you got a plan and purpose for their life. God, cause us to stare into your word and to gaze into your word and see your promises for us. And God, not, and, and not allow the pain to short circuit us, Lord God. To, to continue to walk and understand that, Lord, you're taking us through a process and you're working out something for your glory. So now, somebody today, Lord God, who needs to be encouraged, I pray you'll encourage them. Somebody, Lord God, who needs restoration, let them know that they have never too far away to be restored back to you. Lord, I pray for that, that you allow us to multiply this year and do great things for your glory. We praise you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you could, we're going to, this morning, we're going to touch a couple of scriptures, but our main place that we're going to look at this morning, uh, we're going to look in the book of Job. We're going to be in the book of Job quite a bit this morning. But today we're going to be talking about restoration and multiplication. Restoration, because I don't know about you, I want God to restore stuff in my on our lives. But you know what God also put on my heart? That there's people that I want to see God to restore. Amen. And, I, and I've had the opportunity through my life to talk to folks that I know who one time were in church and now they are no longer in church. And recently I talked to one young person who grew up, actually grew up in this church, and said, listen, I, I really want to be back in church, but I'm just afraid. I'm afraid that what people might think of me some of the things that I've been through I'm afraid about what people might think of me and that grieved my heart I said Lord you know what we want to be a church not just here but the body of Christ we need to be a place where people know that they can come here and be restored no matter how far that they fall that they know that look like the prodigal son they come to themselves and come back to the father's house 
because there's food, there's nurturing in the Father's house and be restored. And so that's why the Lord put that word restoration and multiplication in, our, in my mind because he said, look, he wants us to multiply. We are here to enlarge his kingdom in 2024. Amen. We want to see his kingdom enlarged. And when his kingdom is enlarged, that means more people come into the kingdom. That means we will fill this building as well. It's not just about the building. It's about people coming to know the Savior. And so as we think about the word restore, when you think about restore, the word restore means to bring back, to bring back to or put back into a former or original state. That song that we say, he makes all things new. You know, one of the things that's really big, I don't know, anybody into tennis shoes and sneak, anybody, I know some of our young people are in here into tennis shoes, right? Yep. I, you know, I like, I like tennis shoes a, lot, a little bit, too. And, and one of the things that's really big is, like, restoring shoes now. They have whole stores out here now that they'll take your, ten, your old tennis shoes, restore them. And the, one of the big industries is reselling old shoes. And they sell them more than the new shoes. They take an old pair of Jordans, they clean it up, restore it into almost new condition and put it in the store and they got whole stores that are dedicated. You go in there, nothing on the shelf is new. Everything is, is, is re redone. Everything is a restored pair of shoes. And you go in there and buy that restored pair of shoes for more than you would a new pair of shoes sometimes. It's a huge industry. Restoration. There's a, another thing. I love it when you go on, on shows and you watch HGTV, all of these restoration. Anybody love to watch these shows where they take a beaten, broken down house and they restore it and it's like, wow, it looks better than it did at first. Or even human makeover shows for individuals. You take a person who looked a mess and next thing you know, man, you see what they used to look like. Then they may have gone through a hard time in life, they look rough, and then now they make them up, they look better than they did at first. Restoration. And this month, we, we love a story of restoration. We love to see when things get restored to their original state or even better than their original state. And I'm here to tell you that our God is a God of restoration. He's a God of restoration. We can restore a whole lot of stuff, but God is in the, in the business of restoring people. And the church ought to be in the business of restoring people. And this morning, if you look, that, that, that song that they sang is based on a, a couple of scriptures. You can, 1 Corinthians 5, is that anybody is in Christ, he's a new creature. But the scripture that we're going to focus on is Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. Revelation 21, 5 says, And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I'm making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. I love it. It's rhyming. He said, I'm making everything new. Write it down. Book it. What I'm telling you is trustworthy and true. Our God is in the business of making everything new. And he wants, he wants you to be restored today. He wants restoration in your life. Somebody here in, who's under the sound of my voice needs to be restored. You done walked away from God. God has said, listen, today is the day of restoration for you. All of us in some area in our walk with God need some restoration. Psalm 71, verse 20 and 21, the NIV reads like this. Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again from the depths of the earth. You will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. Two words, you can see them underlined right there. You will restore my life again from the depths and then go down. It says you will do what? increase my honor what do you see inherent in that verse restoration and multiplication God wants to restore you and now he wants to multiply you he wants to restore you good as new and then he doesn't want you to stay good as new now he wants to increase he wants to enlarge your territory how, how many know that all living things do what grow they multiply. That's what God is calling us to do. And in the year of 2024, we are in the business and we are on a mission to restore and to see God do more. Amen? Our, our main text from today is in Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. Read with me. It says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, the cutter, my great army, which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. 
and my people shall never again be put to shame. This kid, the, 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 the southern kingdom, Judah, had walked away from God and God has said, allowed them to be punished and, and God is saying, look, yes, though I have to spank you for disobeying me, my business is I still want to restore you. And God is telling them, though, yes, you have to go through some stuff, I will restore everything that was taken away from you. And I love it. It says, listen, I will restore, and when you say I will restore the years, you, know, you can't get time back but you can get the fruit of what would have been produced in that time back. He said, I will restore the years. What he's really saying is you're not going to get those years back. Those years are gone. But listen, what would have been produced in those years, I will, listen, I will exponentially increase you. When you, when you get into line and do what I'm asking you to do, listen, I will exponentially cause increase in your life. And there's three areas this morning I pray that all of us focus on having God to restore, to be restored in this morning. If you're watching me, I pray that you're restored. I pray if you're here in this place, all of us need some restoration in some area of our lives. Amen. None of us are right where we need to be. We are all in process and in progress. And today, God, as we go into 2024, we want God to restore in 2024. Number one, we need to have a restoration in our walk with God. A restoration in our walk with God. Look at what he says in Joel. Look, if we go into Joel further up in verse 13 of chapter 2. He says, don't tear your clothing in grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not to punish. This morning, God is calling for you to have a restoration and for me to have restore my walk with him. I don't know where you are in your walk and your relationship with God, but I know God wants to restore some stuff in your walk with God. There's somebody who might be listening to me who walked away from uh, of living for God and you've been out there, you're shameful, uh, you're feeling ashamed, you're feeling like, God, can I come back? I love the heart. Look at what God's heart is. It says, return to the Lord your God. Why? For he is merciful and compassionate. He's slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He's eager to what? Relent and not punish. God is more eager to show his mercy than he is to show his wrath. Do y'all know that? A lot of times when we look at God, we look at he's like this cosmic killjoy, my dad used to say, that he's ready. When you mess up, he's ready to bring down, that the lightning is going to strike. No, God said, listen, he, 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 he joys in showing mercy. So right now, God is saying, look, you want, he wants to restore you in your, in your walk with God. He said, don't tear your gr- in your grief. Don't tear your clothing. I don't need no outward expressions of stuff. I want a heart that is for me. Don't give me a whole bunch of lip service. He said, listen, tear your heart instead and return to the Lord your God. He's merciful, y'all. Wherever you are in your walk with God, just know that, look, God is merciful and he's ready for you to come back to him. And what better day, what better time to come back and recommit yourself to your, in your walk with God than on the last day of the year? To start the new year fresh in your walk with God. Where is it? Is it in your time of God that you need to be restored? Is it in that intimacy? Have you found found yourself drifting away with your time with the Lord? God said, return to me. Psalm chapter 51, verse 10. His psalmist said, create in me. David said, create in me a clean heart, O God. We need to ask God to restore us in our walk. And we got, and he said, listen, we need to restore in our walk with him. We got to recognize that he has made us to live for him, not ourselves. And we're going to talk about this later. Sometimes we're confusing ourselves where we are in our own walk with God. We, we, even in our walk with God, sometimes we are selfish in what we, in our walk with God, we're selfish in what we're doing. We're trying to, we try to please God and, and try to demonstrate uh, by, by performance. God said, no, it's about your heart. It's not about all this outward activity. 2 Corinthians 5, 15, he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. I love it. Me and Al were talking about this, was it yesterday or sometime this week? We talk about it quite a bit. And and I praise God. Al said, the Lord has really put on his heart that, listen, the older I get, 
the only thing that matters is what I do for God. It, th th that's the only thing that matters. And that's what he said in this verse, verse fi uh, 15 of 2 Corinthians 5. He died for everyone so that everyone who receives his new life will no longer live for themselves. Whatever I do, I live, I live for him and him alone. Not, no, no glory for myself. 2024 is for a time for you to be restored in your walk with God. Who are you living for? Restored in our walk with God. We, we got to ask ourselves, am I living for my... We lose sight of it all the time. It's so easy to get distracted in this world that we live in. Joel said, look, in chapter 2, God is calling his people, look, return to me. Be restored today. God said, look, I've given you a new year. Last year, you didn't live for me. You know it. But I was merciful and gracious. I allowed you to get here today. Every day he has allowed you to wake up and breath in your body is another opportunity and is another show of his grace and his mercy. He said, yep, you didn't do it yesterday, but my mercy is new every morning. I'm giving you another opportunity to be restored to me today. And my question is, what will we do with Jesus? We talked about last week was Christmas. What will we do with this one who came to redeem us? Will we continue to live for ourselves or walk with him? You need to be restored in your walk. We need to ask God for restoration in our walk. But also, as we restore in our walk, you know what happens as a byproduct is that number two, restore my witness. Restore my walk, my commitment to God. But the second thing is to restore my witness for God. As I walk with God, now I'm a better witness for God. Look at what it says in Joel 2, verse 17. It says, listen, the, let the priests, the Lord's ministers, weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, have pity on your people, Lord, and do not make your inheritance a disgrace, an object of scorn among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Why, is, why should it be said in our country, in our, in our county, in our city, where is their God? God said, listen, I'm trying to restore the witness, the witness of my people in the community. Because I know for a fact, if we look at our world today, the witness for Christ is not as loud as it should be. Amen. We hear a whole lot of other voices, but the witness for Christ is not as loud as it should be. I'm, I'm so excited. There, I, there's a, y'all know, I, I love hip hop, and I, met, I may have mentioned this brother before. There's a Christian rapper. His name is D1. And many of you, if you're on social media, D1, he's a Christian rapper. He's been out there a long, long time. And D1 has made it his mission to be, to be real, to be righteous, and to be relevant. That's his themes. That's his motto. And he has recently called out many of the secular rappers for their content that is detrimental to our community. And he has publicly gone on social media and a whole lot of other platforms and mentioned names of many big name rappers. I mean, Meek Mill, Rick Ross, all of these people. He's made names, and some of y'all don't know who I'm talking about, but if you do, you know, you, if some of y'all, if you're a little bit younger, you know what I'm talking about. He's mentioned their names, and he said, I love it. He said, you can do better, bruh. Because you're, 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 you're giving us music that promotes murder, and, and, and drugs and violence in our community, that's killing our community. We need to put out something that is better, that uplifts our community. And this young man of God has stood and proclaimed this truth, and he is getting crucified. He is standing on his feet, and there are people on a large platform and said, man, I, I'm, I'm tired of your Christian you-know-what. I mean, because he's declaring Christ and he said, I am bold for Christ and I don't care. He said, listen, I got the industry shook. They're nervous now because I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a line in the sand. If you're for God, you're for him. If you're not, you're not. There's not you can't be any in between. And he's calling the music industry. If you say you follow Christ, you got to represent him. I'm here to tell you in 2024, God is calling a rest for a restoration in the witness of the church. Sometimes we've been too vague, y'all. Why? Because we're scared. We, we, we're nervous that, listen, they may not accept me. We don't want to be ostracized. We don't want to be pushed to the side. We don't want people to say certain things about me. But I'm here to tell you, you got to stand on your feet and in love. Speak the truth in love. I don't have to go about purposely trying to offend people. But what I notice is that when you speak the truth, sometimes the truth hurts. Especially if you want to stay in a lie. And God is calling us 
is the church. He said, listen, I want to restore my witness. He is calling us to go into all the world and what make disciples. 2024 should be the year that we expect to see God do more. And if we're going to expect to see God do more, that means his people got to go out the door. Y'all didn't get that. If we want to see God bring more, then we got to get outside of the doors of the church. Amen. We got to go into all the world and teach all nations and share the good news. We have to, we got to, be, because they're not always going to come to the church. And we got to be bold in our witness. 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, again, verse 19, said God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. God is calling for us to restore our witness. He said, we speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Remember, come back, that's restoration. How many know that everybody you know needs to be restored? You said, well, they don't know Christ. They need to be restored. Restoration it means to get back to where you were, were originally created for. How many know all of us were created in God's image? All of us were created for relationship. But sin came. That's what the gospel is about, restoration. God is calling us. He said, you speak for Christ. That's why he's left us here. He said, he's done works, but greater works will we do. Why? There's a whole lot more of us. We can go out there and proclaim the good news. And you say, Pastor, I'm just not really confident in my way. I'm not confident in saying what I should say. And you know what one thing that you can do? You can invite somebody to a place where the gospel is going to be shared. You know, what you, you know what else you can do? I, what, what was our first point? Restore my what? My walk. You know, when I walk like I should walk, that's a witness. I can witness without words. I can share people, I can share Christ with people without words. My, we got to ask ourselves, is the way I walk, is the way I live speaking of Christ? Do my priorities speak of Christ? If not, I need to have my walk restored so my witness is restored in my neighborhood. So my witness is restored on my job. Am I walking in such a way on my job that when people see me, I don't even have to say anything about Jesus. They know there's something different about me. This year, 2024, listen, there's a lot of times when we have New Year's service and we say, God is going to get, God going to bless you. He going to give, he going to, he going to pour it down on your house this morning. This is not a shouting message as much as it is an ouch message. Amen. God will pour out the blessing, but there's some stuff we got to do. Amen. God, he's calling for restoration, and he's given us the power to do that. He wants to re restoration in your walk, restoration in my witness, but also for the church, there needs to be a restoration in our worship. Look at it in Joel chapter 2, verse 26. He said, listen, once I restore the years that the locusts have stolen, he said, once again, verse 26, you will have all the food you want. There's the increase. And what will you do? You will praise the Lord your God who does these miracles for you. God wants there to be a, 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 an unleashing of worship in the church. Worship means uh, to, to surrender, to, to prostrate oneself, to understand that, listen, it's for God I live and for God I die. We need to, to proclaim his glory. There's got to be a restoration of time of worship. Psalm 51, unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. When we come into this place on Sunday morning, my prayer for Encounter Life Church is that there's a restoration of worship in Encounter Life Church. Amen? Worship, don't, you don't have to holler, you don't have to scream, you don't have to run up and down the aisles, but if you feel like it, that's okay too. Amen? restoration of worship restoration of recognizing that Lord I'm in awe of you and, I'm, and I praise you why because you have done great things in my life when we come into the house of the Lord can I be honest y'all I understand everybody has a different style of worship some people are more subdued I'm a loud mouth my wife is not a loud mouth but one thing that I do know, I know that even those of you who are not loud mouths, when something exciting happens in your life, you can really get emotional and loud about it. Amen, somebody. 
I, I've seen people who, look, you may, you may not be the very vocal person, but when something significant enough happens in your life, you will shout, you will get excited, you will smile, you will express exuberance. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, when I think about how he has redeemed me, brought me out of darkness into light, and I get an opportunity in the house of the Lord every week to come with somebody else with my testimony. There ought to be something that breaks out. My prayer that there is a restoration of worship in the house of the Lord. Because do you know as we worship and praise and uplift him, do you know that is a witness? When people come in and say, man, they all, are, they all are excited about this guy. What is it? Let me take you to a man who told me everything about me, who has redeemed me. And we got that testimony. You bring somebody into a house like that, people are looking for authenticity. People are looking for people who are passionate. Do you know people, people can, one thing that I know, people follow passion. Amen. There are people who've been sincerely wrong, but when, when you got somebody who is passionate about something, man, it is it. Passion is infectious. Am, am I right? When somebody is a passionate, passion will cause you to listen to somebody that you may not normally have listened to. But when you're passionate about truth, when I'm passionate about the one who woke me up this morning, the one who put food on my table, the one who came, stepped out of eternity into time to redeem me, and I express that, that ought to incite passion in everybody. Amen? Let the, as the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. Who he has redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. My prayer in 2024 that we don't have to pull nobody to worship. You don't have to pull nobody to give God a prayer. Come on, somebody, come on. No, because I think of all he's done for me. When I think of what he provided for me, how, listen, when I've disobeyed him, but he's still faithful, that I give him glory. My prayer in 2024 is that we have a restoration, that you're, there's a re restoration in our walk with God, a restoration in our witness for God, and a restoration in our worship for God. And, you know, I, I ended with worship, but I'm here to tell you, you know, it actually all should start with worship. Everything rises and falls on worship. When I recognize who God is, that ought to make me want to walk right. When I recognize how good he is, that ought to make me want to be a witness and go and tell somebody. It all should start with worship. Let 2024 be a restoration for us. If you're here and you're listening to me and you said, I've walked away, God is here. Look, he's saying, look, it's time to have your walk resto restored. He is rich in mercy. And he desires, listen, he does, not, he, he does not desire to show his wrath as much as he desires to show his love and his mercy. You're not too far from God for you to be restored in your walk with him today. Amen? But you said, listen, we need to restore our walks, restore our witness, restore our worship. And the thing about it, I told you all that, 60% of people make New Year's resolutions, but only 8% of them keep them. And there's somebody in here, I just said, listen, I know I need to get back in my walk with God. I know I need to, I know I need to be more consistent in my walk with God, but you know what, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm getting there. I encourage you, stop procrastinating. Start today. Start today. Some of us will say, look, I, I, I never forget. I had a friend of mine who said, I want to start reading the Bible. I, I forgot what it, she was going to start reading the Bible, but she was waiting to the first of the year to get started fresh. No, 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 no. <laughs> if, if you want restoration in your walk, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't have to say, look, look, tomorrow is January the 1st. I'm going to get up. No, you need to, if God is pulling conviction on your heart, you need to do something today. It's the restoration of your witness. Listen, st starting this year, next week, I'm going to go do X, Y, Z. God said, no. One of the best things that I know is that when, you, when God has put a conviction on your heart, do not wait. Do it right away. How many know when you first came to know Christ? Remember when you first came to know Christ? Man, you were so excited. You told somebody. The longer you sit on that thing, I'm trying to tell you, you don't sit on it. Start today because what happens, the enemy wants you to what? Procrastinate. I'll do it tomorrow. 
I'll do it tomorrow. I'll get up and read my Bible tomorrow. I, I'm gonna listen. I, but what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna go and go get me a devotional beat one day this week. And I'm gonna no man. You got a Bible? Start today. You got an online reading plan? Start today. You need to get. If there's some people you need to that get out of your life and your walk with God, you say, look, I want to walk with God, but I'm I'm connected. I'm dating somebody that I know I shouldn't be dating, and I, I need a, I need some time to be able to break that relationship. No, start today. Start today, and if you're going to start today, I'm going to finish with, with this. I'm going to give you all an acronym to leave this new year. As you're going into your new year, as we're going into 2024, and we want God to restore, God is calling you to start today. When, number one, if you're going to start today, S and start means stop making excuses. What are the excuses that you're making to keep you from doing what God has called you to do? Stop making excuses. Proverbs 28, 13, a man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never be successful. But if he confesses and forsakes them, he gets another chance. Stop making excuses. What are the excuses that you and I are making that keep us from doing what God has called us to do? What is it? Making excuses. We all the time, look, I, I'm, this is not my walk with God. We, we make excuses. Some of y'all, New Year, say, I want to lose weight. We got excuses. I never forget, but I told my wife, listen, you keep cooking all this good food. Well, how am I going to lose weight? You making this for the kids? I can't let, listen. I, the only reason I'm eating it is because you're making it for the kids. No, you don't. She said you don't have to eat what they're eating. That's an excuse. Listen, we all we make excuses. Why? Because we don't. Sometimes we really don't want to change. Sometimes we make excuses because we don't want to change. The Bible talks about there's a man that said, "Listen, I can't go to work because there's a lion out in the street. I don't want to go out there." He's making excuses. God is calling you to stop, listen, procrastinating. Start your walk, put up the sign. Who are the people you need to get out of your life? What are the habits you need to say? Listen, we're going to stop that today. Stop making excuses and start today. But not only do you need to start make, stop making excuses, the second thing to do in order to start today, stop making excuses and then take inventory of your life. Assess, look at yourself. One, one of my mentors, Eric, Dr. Eric Thomas, says this. One of the biggest problems that people have is the inability to self-assess. Sometimes we don't want to take the time to stop and look and see what our problem is. Psalm 119, 59 says, I pondered the direction of my life, and I turned to follow your laws. God is telling you to stop, ponder the direction of your life. We need to slow down. 2024, we're heading into 2024. God has shown me, Dwayne, slow down and look, really look at what are you doing? What are, what are you doing? You're, are you, you're, you're all over the place. The reason why you can't, you, you can't have your walk restored because you're all over the place. God is saying, look, I want you to slow down and take some inventory of what's in your life and say, look, I, I got to get rid of some stuff. Anybody ever take an inventory in your house before you clean? <laughs> Amen. You got to say to myself, oh, Lord, don't say that. I know like my, our garage, when we moved to the new house, we had our garage was at one point for a long time, almost a year, you couldn't put a car in it some of, because it was just storage. And I said, I said, Tracy, we need to take inventory because there's stuff in here that has been in storage for a couple of years that we haven't seen. If I haven't seen it in 365 days, I probably don't need it. <laughs> Anybody like that? I got stuff in store, I got stuff in the garage, I can't put my car in there, it's in a box, I don't know what's in there. And if I haven't needed it in the last year, I don't even want to look at it. My thing is this, get the dumpster, put the box in the dumpster. She like, you don't know what's in, it could be pictures, I don't care what's in there right now. Because if I see it, I might get emotional about it, and say, so, oh, you know what, I was looking for that. I have, you tell me, you see this? Where this been? Well, put it on the shelf, and it's gonna stay in there another year. So we had to take inventory, go in and say, "Look, we have, we, do I? What is in my? What is actually in here?" God is calling us today, calling some of us. Take inventory. What is in your life that you need to get rid of? What, who are some people? Take inventory of some people. Take inventory of some habits, some things that you're doing with your day, with your time that are getting in the way of your walk with God. Say, God, I'm, as I take inventory, listen, I got too much time on social media. Amen, somebody. 
As I take inventory, I don't need cable. I don't need to watch so much TV. I need to turn my TV off so I can spend more time in the Word. As I, as I take inventory, I got some people that I spend time around that they don't love God as much as I do. So they kind of pull me away. To God to say, if you're going to be successful and you're going to, to, to restore, have him restore things in your life, he's calling you to take inventory of some things and, then, and find out what you need to remove so that you can be all that God has called you to be. Start today. Stop making excuses. Take inventory. And then once you take an inventory, A, act in faith. Act in faith. Now I've taken inventory. Now I'm going to move in direction by faith. I'm going to move in direction by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. I love it. It said, we walk by faith. That's movement. Walking is movement. We move by faith. God, I'm going to move in the direction that you call me to by faith. I may not feel like I have all the strength. I may not feel like I have all the resources, but I'm going to take a step in your direction and trust you to give me the strength that I need. Start today. Act in faith. You say, well, Pastor, I don't know, I don't know where to start in the Bible. I, I understand. But God has said, listen, act in faith. Oh, you need to be, all he wants you to do, begin reading the word. Yes, you need to have a plan. You need to have some, some, some kind of help guiding you through what you need to do. But one thing you got to start is start somewhere. Don't keep sitting. Begin to move forward in faith. Putting your trust in what God has already said. Start today. Stop making excuses. Take inventory of your life. Act in faith. And I love it. Darian said it earlier. She was preaching my sermon. Refocus your thoughts. As we, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have God to restore some stuff, you gotta refocus your thoughts. Stop, stop focusing on what 20, 2023 is gone. We got how many hours? Somebody tell me, how many hours we got left in 2023? 12. You got 12 hours left. Refocus your thoughts. We can say, man, I should have done this. I should have, listen, I told y'all a few weeks ago, you grow in the direction of your gaze. You grow in the direction of your gaze. The thing you focus on is that's the way you keep going. Some of us can't move forward because we're so busy looking back in the rearview mirror. Has anybody ever seen somebody drive a car by looking in the rearview mirror? You can't do it. You're going to crash. Refocus your thoughts. Philippians chapter 3, 13 says, listen, the one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, reaching forward to those which are ahead, I press toward the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And he said, be careful, Proverbs 4, be careful how you think. Why? Because your life is shaped by your thoughts. Refocus your thoughts. If you want to change, listen, your world, change your mind. Be transformed, the Bible says, by the renewing of your mind. Start today. Stop listening to some of the stuff we're listening to. And dive into the word of God. Amen? Start today. Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. Take inventory of your life. Act in faith. Refocus your thoughts. And then finally, trust God completely. As you act in faith, look, trust God that he going to take you every step of the way. Psalm 20, verse 7. Some trust in their war chariots, others in their horses, but we trust in the power of the Lord our God, God, this is, this is the year he is trying to do a work of restoration, and I know he is in, a, in the business of multiplication. I believe God is calling for increase in your life, and he wants to restore some things in your life. He said in Joel, he will restore the years that the locusts have stolen. He will bring back the fruit of those years that you lost, but we got to be consistent. We got to stop making excuses. We got to take the time to be still, take inventory of what's going on in our life and get rid of some things and whatever. And then we got to act in faith, make sure that we're focusing not on what's behind us, but what's in front of us and diving into God's word and whatever he tells us to trust him completely. Again, we said we walk by faith, what? Not by sight. Sister Darian was just up here. I hope she doesn't mind. I'm using her as an example. Is that okay, Darian? Darian, praise God, it's good to have her back. Wasn't it good to have her back this morning? Amen. You can clap. Amen. 
But some of y'all who don't know, we're talking about trusting God completely. Amen? And, and, and God giving increase and, and restoring some things. Some of you who don't know, Darian actually is, is she's a musician full time. That's her thing, right? That's what she does. She was a, teaching in school, but her passion is music. And what God had put on her heart to start a company, a, 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 a music company, a vocal company that travels the world singing gospel music. And she has compiled a group of amazing voices. And for the month of December, they toured through the country of Italy, singing the gospel. And if you follow her on social media, some of you saw her pat the arenas. People of all nationalities. This, I mean, just amazing. And what? Singing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I say that to say is because she had to start, stop making excuses. And when she said that, I've seen God blow my mind and do some amazing things and enlarge my territory and take me places to do things that I never thought would happen, that's because she acted in faith. Did not have the resources. Did not have all that she needed. I know because I've talked to her, but God made a way out of no way. He provided the people, provided the venues, and she's been a whole month, a whole month of December singing the praises of our God in Italy. Our God is able to multiply. He's able to increase. He's able to expand your territory, but you got to stop making excuses. You got to take inventory. She had to cut some stuff out of her life. Even, I'm going to tell you, you got to take inventory of stuff you're doing. I'm a pastor. Darren, y'all know what's singing worship leads. She had to send me a message and say, Pastor, I'm not going to be able to do that anymore. Because if I'm going to go do this, I can't do that. You got to say, look, everything is good. Look, everything that is good ain't good for you. Let that sink in. Worship lead, look, it was good for me but not, may, may not have been good for her at the moment in the season where God has her. So you got to understand that everything that is good may not be good for you. I got to take inventory and say, I'm doing some good stuff, but God said, is that good for you in the season where I have you right now, where I'm trying to take you? And even though sometimes we can hold on to those things that seem good to us, but God said, in faith, I want you to act. You won't have to let that thing go. And as you let it go, don't keep looking at what you let go. Refocus your thoughts on where I'm taking you. Refocus your thoughts on where I'm taking you. I'm, I'm talking to myself because sometimes as I act in faith and I let it go, then God said, look, you step out there. He said, Lord, hold on. This is uncomfortable. I think I need to go back to where I was at. God said, no, don't look at where you're at. Where you're at. Refocus where I'm taking you. And then trust me completely. And watch me bring increase. Do y'all believe that? In the year of 2024, we're believing God for more and we are empowered to restore. I believe God wants to restore some people back to a walk with him. I believe God wants to restore some lot stuff. There may be some things that God wants to restore in your life. There's some of you, God wants to restore your relationship with him. He's calling you to restoration today. Well, we're going to do something different this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Derek if you can help me out. As we close, on each side of the stage, we're going to have a board. One says restore, the other says more. And we're going to give you all an index card. And what we're going to give you an opportunity, and if we could play that, he makes all things new. If we could play that, that song, Moving Forward. As you can come now. You can come now as I'm talking. What we're going to do, on one board is going to say more, one is going to say restore. What I'm going to give you an opportunity to do is write down what you want to see God restore in your life. Or who do you want to see God restore that's in your life? It could be a loved one that you said has walked away or got the enemy, the world has been beating him up and you say, God, I want to see him restored. I want to see her restored. It could be a person. I don't know. It could be something that you've lost that you want God to restore. That's on one side. And on the other side, more. What do you want to see God an increase of in your life? You might say, Lord, I need more money. That's all right. You could say that. You got, I want to see more of my witness. I want to see more impact in my community. I don't know. What do you want to see God multiply in your life? I want if we can hand out the index cards. We have several index cards. I'm going to give you an opportunity as we're singing that song and that song is playing lightly. 
I want to give you an opportunity to write down what you want to see God to restore, who you want to see God to restore in 2024. If you can hand them out to everybody, just give, hand them down the road. And what we're going to do, we got some tape up here, and I want you to come, whatever you want God to restore, I want you to tape it to the board. Whatever you want to see God increase, we want to tape it to the board. If you're comfortable, if you say, look, I'm writing this person, this thing down, I don't want nobody to know, that's fine. You can keep it to yourself, all right? You can keep it to yourself. But after we've had a time for you to write down and come tape it up on the board, I think our, we have some tape as well. I'm going to leave the tape up here. Thank you. I'm going to put one thing of tape here. You can come up, grab a little piece of tape, and rip off your card and then tape it to the tape it to the board. And what we're going to do after that, we're going to have a season of prayer. We're going to have a season of prayer for God to restore some things because we know he's the God who will able to restore the years that the locusts have stolen. We the God that makes all things new. He's the God of increase. And we're just going to have a few people come and to pray over these things that we place before him. Amen? So this time, just feel free to write those down as we sing. He's making all things new. say you can write one for restore one for more if you got you want to rip your card in half you can you can put one on each board amen what you want to see God to restore what you if you want to see God to do more amen you can send us that if you go to encounterchurch.net forward slash next encounterchurch.net forward slash next then you can fill out right, right there there is our connect card and down there you can put write your prayer request you can write us then look I want to see God restore X I'm praying for God to restore this in my life I want to see God do more in this area of my life. All right, EncounterChurch.net. If we can put that up on the screen, EncounterChurch.net forward slash next. That'll take you to our connect form, and you can put your request there on that form. Amen. Amen. Continue to come. You make all things new.
can we all stand together? I'm going to ask Brother Al, Brother Dave, uh, Sister Tanya, if you could join me. Pastor Matt, can you join me as well? We're going to get them a microphone really quick. Amen. Let's get them a microphone. And we're just going to go before the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Believing God to do great things. Amen. We got a board full of things and people that we want to see God restore. How many know are expecting God to do it? Hallelujah. We're expecting God to do it. We're expecting God to give the increase. So this morning, I'm going to ask all of us, can we all together pray together? We're going to extend our hands first for either one of these. I just want us to go through and briefly just pray for God to do an amazing thing, to blow our minds this year. Amen? I want God to blow our minds to do something that we just could not have expected as we look for God to restore uh, and to bring, to bring more this year. So just going to go through. We're going to have a season of prayer briefly. Brother Al, Pastor Max, Tanya, Dave. We're going to pray over these, and then we're going to get ready to close us out. Amen. As we get ready to head into 2024. Amen. Amen. Pastor Matt, could you start us off? Praise the Lord. Can we do this? I'm sorry. Let's do this. Extend your hand to the boards, y'all. Let's extend our hands to the boards. We want to see God do a move. Come on. Let's go. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, we just thank you for the thank word you, of God Lord. that came forth this morning, thank challenging you, us. Hallelujah. you God of new beginnings. Yes, God. And Lord, we've given testimony of that by these, what we want you to restore in our lives. Yes, what God. You, what, what we want more of in our lives. Yes, God. And Lord, we do this because you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can even think or imagine. Yes, God. Make it real to us, Yes, Lord. Lord. We're coming from our hearts, Lord. We pray that you do great things in us. Help us to look forward to the new. To so this yes. new year, yes. expecting great things from you. Yes, God. Expecting you to answer our prayers for you have promised us if we ask anything according to your will. Yes, God. You hear us. And we know that if you hear us, we have the petition that we desire of you. Thank you, Lord. It is our desire, O oh Lord, on these boards here that you restore certain things in our lives. Yes, God. That you give us more for you are able to do more for the mm. cattle upon a thousand hills belong to you. Yes, God. We are your children. Yes, God. And so, Lord, we just commit these things to you. And when we come to this point next year, we want to be able to look back and see that you have restored and that you have increased and multiplied. Yes. And we commit it to you, Lord, in Jesus' name and for his sake. Thank you. Lord, we're so excited about 2024, the year to come, God. And just thank you for everybody here. Thank you for for your, your love for us, God. And we ask in 2024 that you would give us more and that you would restore, Lord. We're looking forward. I'm excited. I'm excited about the message. I'm excited to see what you do in the lives of the folks that are here. And we're just looking for us to be able to get more of you and for us to really just be drowned in your love and in pursuit of living for you. Holy committed, Lord. Yes to what it is that you want for us in 2024, Lord. And we're looking expectantly, Lord. We are, we, we, we are in love with the idea that you want to restore, that you want to give more, Lord. And we, we just submit our lives to you right now, looking forward, excited about what's coming in 2024, Lord. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your commitment, your compassion. Your, 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 your steadfastness, fastness, all of this, Lord, yes. that you have for us in 2024. I'm, I'm really excited and looking expectantly for you to do amazing things, for you to give the increase in what we have going on here at ELC, but then the church at large for us to see more folks in the building, but increase in every area of our lives, and especially, Lord, for you to give us increase and to restore our relationship with you, Lord. Help us to see that it is the most important thing that we have here as we build and connect with you here on earth but that as we also prepare for a life with you in eternity as well God so thank you so much for the year to come and we're expecting great things in Jesus name Father we just thank you for uh, this opportunity Lord God uh, Lord what a gracious compassionate God 
uh, Lord, you are. And Lord, I pray for those um, under the sound of our voice, Lord, who may not believe, Lord God, uh, that you have the power to restore. Lord, would you encourage them uh, today? Thank you, Lord, that as your word says, Lord God, that you will restore unto us, Lord, the years that the locusts have eaten. And many out here, Lord, I, I know, Lord, myself included, many out here, Lord, may feel that this restoration, uh, Lord God, under their power, Lord, is just impossible. But you are a God, Lord, you hold our power. You are a God, Lord, who sustains us. You are a God who keeps us. Lord, I'm just marveled, marveled, Lord, by your compassion. Lord, I marvel, Lord, by the fact, Lord God, that um, though, Lord God, we are such sinners, uh, Lord God, we're such sinners, Lord, you don't treat us as our sins deserve. Uh, Lord God, you've decided, Lord God, though we were in bondage to sin, we were in bondage to sin, Lord, you, Lord God, you've decided yourself, Lord, that you would come from heaven, walk this crusty and dirty earth, Lord God, be condemned by man and die for us. Uh, Lord, what compassion, what love, what mercy. And Lord, as we enter this new year, have your way, Lord God. We want to be restored. We want to be multiplied. Not in our way, Lord, even define restoration for us, Lord. Define your multiplication uh, for us, Lord. We want to be restored. We want to be multiplied your way. We thank you. We honor you. We give you the praise. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the semicolon. Thank you that we are going to see in just a few hours the full stop end of 2023. And yet, as a semicolon has that period that says that year is over, you've given us the comma that says more is yet to come. So we thank you, God, for the semicolon. We thank you for being so faithful in 2023. And we look forward to your outpouring pouring of blessings in 2024. We do so because we ask for more in 2024. We stand in agreement with our precious pastor. Lord God, I want to stop and thank you right now for the gift that Pastor Dwayne Anthony McKinney is to this local assembly. Thank you for all the gifts, the multitude of gifts that you have placed in one person and how he's not selfish, but he's poured out every weekend through the week and on Sunday. He's poured out to be a blessing to this local assembly. Lord, we don't take that for granted. You said you give good gifts to your children and our pastor is a gift to us. So we thank you. We thank you that still yet again, another year, we still have the wisdom of our Pastor Emeritus, Pastor Lorenzo McKinney. Father, I thank you. We should not take these things for granted. We thank you for the leadership that you've put in this place, that our pastor would even think to run past his message by us, that we might be on one accord, that we might be the answer to Jesus' priestly prayer to make us one, that there would be no divisions. Father, forgive us when we have been divided. Forgive us, Lord God, and take us into this new year as one body, with one God and one Holy Spirit. We come united as a body, Lord, lifting up these prayer requests that are on the board. Not just as individuals, but when we join together, us plus you is all we need, Lord God. Yes. It's all we need to do the work of the ministry, to build up the faith, to build up the saints, Lord God, in their faith, to edify them as your word calls us to do, to rebuke in love, to speak the truth in love, to walk in grace, Lord God. Amen. Lord, that's what we want to do. Yes. We have everything we need pertaining to life and godliness. Your word has already declared. But we want to do more. We have all of you that we will ever get. But we want to do more with what we have of you. 
First, God, increase our knowledge of you. Increase our will to do. You tell us you give us the will and the do of your good pleasure. We don't even know what to pray. We don't even know how to do it. But you said that if we would be still and recognize that you and you alone are God. Father, that you would move through us in a mighty way. That souls would come to be saved. Lord God, on this board, on these boards, we know people are praying for their loved ones. Pray, praying for people to be saved. Pray, praying for sick to be healed praying for financial stability, praying for increase. And Father, so we take these things and we give them to you, yeah. to the one who's able to do abundantly and above all anything our minds could think or imagine. As our pastor says, Lord, we ask you yes. to blow our minds yes. In Jesus. because we know that you're capable. Yes, God. As I like to say, Lord, we've read the resume of Jehovah God from Genesis through Revelation, you don't lose, you don't fail. So Lord God, increase our understanding of you. Increase our willingness to do things your way. Bless and keep our pastors, our, lead, our pastors, our leadership, our bodies, each and, end of, each and every one that's in this local assembly, here in the building and at home. Keep your hand on them. Yes, Lord. Keep them seeking after you. In the name of Jesus. Keep their face lifted to the hills from which cometh their help. Let them know that their help cup does not come from the government. Yes, their help does not come from their giftedness, their talents. Their help comes, our help comes from the Lord. Amen. He who is able to restore, to make more of so little. Lord, take our little. Take our little whatever we have, Father. We just need you to touch it and make it more yes, so that it would bring you glory, you honor, and you all the praise that you and you alone deserve. Amen. Amen. We commit it to you and each one that's in this room, each one that's a part of our local assembly. We, commit, we recommit ourselves to you as we step into a new year. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. And we thank you because, Lord, you hear our prayers. And we come with our eyes open for you to do great and mighty things that our mind could never conceive. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we applaud our king this morning? Amen. Can we applaud our king this morning? come at this time amen I think they're little one they're little ladies in the back in the classroom amen can we give them a, a ELC some ELC love this morning amen I, I just want to say it is always an honor as a pastor when when someone comes and said listen I've been visiting this church for a while and I want to I want to know about making this church my church home and, and several, what about a, about a month, month and a half, almost two months ago, a press came to me and said, listen, I'm interested in talking about being a member here. And so over the last few, several weeks, we've gone through our membership classes here. We, they come and met me here on Sunday morning. We've gone through membership classes. And I told them, I said, listen, after you've seen who we are as Encounter Life Church and we share with you our, our, our salvation, the statements, our strategy, our structure, if there's anything that is that it makes you uncomfortable, you know, you let me know. He said, Pastor, if it's something that made me uncomfortable, you wouldn't have known because we'd have already been gone. <laughs> said, I wouldn't have said no. You just wouldn't have seen us no more. Amen. So we're good to go. So a couple of weeks ago, we finished our, our membership classes and they were able to fill out. Oh, there's a little lady. Amen. Amen. They fill out a membership covenant and they said that they want to make this branch of Zion 
uh, their church home and our church, our, their church family. Amen? So on this Sunday, the last Sunday of 2023, as we head into 2024, we as a body would like to extend the right hand of fellowship uh, to welcome you into uh, the family of Encounter Life Church. Uh, we want to be a place where you are fed, where your gifts are used, and that anything that needs to be restored in your life is restored, and that God multiplies what he's placed there, and he does great things in you and your family. Amen? Amen. Uh, if it be the will of all the congregation, let it be known by saying, I. Amen. Welcome to Encounter Life Church family. Amen? Amen. Did y'all want to say something? All right, they said they good. I asked them if they want to say anything. They said, we're good. Y'all, we'll hear from them later. Amen? Amen. Bless the Lord. Way to end, no better way to end 2023. Amen? And we just welcome them to the family. We're excited about what God is going to do. Can we all stand together? Amen? Amen. And as I close, as I say this, look, if you're interested, say, Pastor, if you may have been attending a while, and sometimes some folks here may assume you're a member of the church. You've just been here for a while. You say, but I officially want to make this my church home. Please see me, and we can talk and set up a time to go through our membership classes together. Amen? Amen. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your love. And we're thank you, thankful, Lord, that you are the God of restoration. And I pray, Lord, as we head out of this year into the next, that this be like no, a year like no other. Lord, we know there will be some rough times. Help us not focus on pain, but to focus on the product and fall in love with the process as, Lord God, you creating us, Lord God, and, ma and making us, Lord, all that you would have us to be. We praise you. We honor you. Now, as we leave this place, but never your presence, we ask for you to protect us. Continue to bless this amazing family and use them. Thank you for placing them here. And we pray that, Lord God, they'll find love and acceptance and, Lord God, and, 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 and restoration where there needs to be restoration in this house. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy New Year, everybody. I'd like to say this. For those of you who are here, if you want, we do not have watch night service tonight, but you can join. If you have ever been on the prayer call, the prayer call Zoom, that same link at 1130. You can jump on at 1130 and we can pray and praise in the new year together. It's the link for the prayer call if you've already ever joined it. If not, I will send that link out for as a text as well. For you if you don't have our tech service come see me i will get you the link and we'll post it amen so that you can join in for new year's also we'll post the link on the church app the encounter life church app you can put the qr code up for that amen god bless you happy new year everybody i'm gonna put them in my arm Thank you.